Hello everyone and welcome to WD18, the Watford fan channel and today we've got another podcast. Last week we started it with Jude Baines, a very, uh, it was taken well by a lot of you, uh, a lot of support shown in the comment section and the views, 300 views I think, so really good start for the podcast. This week we've got Sean Walker on, prolific Wat- Watford tweeter, you want to say hello Sean? Yeah, you're right lads. <laughs> um, so we've got a lot of interesting topics to talk about, obviously Andre Gray signing yesterday, this is recorded on the Thursday, so yeah, in, very interesting to see him sign for Watford. Obviously, Liverpool coming up on Saturday. With Charleston also signing. So, we've got a lot of things to talk about. We'll start off with Andre Gray. Now, you've probably seen my video. I will leave a card if you want to see it. But um, I was ecstatic, really. I think I said simply Watford summed it up that we that it's kind of transformed the window. Would you agree with that? I mean, it's a big signing club record fee. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I just think from a matter of days we've gone I've gone from being quite worried to being confident really yeah. uh Andre Gray I think he just he just suits Watford to an absolute T you know yeah. he's he's got the power to as he, I think I was, I was watching your uh, video about Andre Gray um yesterday and you said it perfectly he's got the power to to play as a lone striker but then he would really suit playing off with Dini in a partnership so if we play a 4-2-3-1 he suits that perfectly and he suits it perfectly as well if yeah. we're playing uh, with Deeney and Gray both up top. So it, I That's think he gives like, he gives us a lot of options. Yeah, yeah, he gives us a lot of options. But I got kind of a couple of couple of comments in the um, in the comment section where people were saying, well, I think would he partner Troy because obviously we know Silva's coming into the team, well, coming in, in as manager with a kind of four 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 one one formation or four two three one. So he's playing with a lone striker. Would you see Dini as kind of just playing off him or with it like he did with Vigala? Uh I think it's quite tough um, because we've got Will Hughes, obviously, and then uh, we've got Pereira. And Pereira can play on the wing, mm. but for me, he's I think he's a bit wasted out there. I think in, in the 10, mm. he suits it a lot better. So not only does he give him Dini, not only does Gray give Dini competition, he also... It, it's it's a good it's a good him? problem. Yeah, it does he replace him? It's a good it's a good uh, it's a good problem to have. But yeah, I, I, know. I, I, I mean, really I really I really don't know. I yeah, really don't I'm know. not sure either because obviously I don't think Akaka is going to get a lot of game time. He's going to be kind nah. of an impact sub. And then we've got Dini, obviously club captain and kind of people. If you don't know Watford, you just think, oh, Troy Dini, Troy Dini FC. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it would be a shock to a lot of people if he did get kind of dropped. Obviously, he can't play on Saturday. But for Gray, would you see, would you see Andre Gray starting on Saturday, going straight into the side? Ah, uh, I want him to. Yeah, yeah. I think well, Dini's Dini's got his uh, groin problem, doesn't mm. he? So. Um... Yeah, I've I've heard that Dini's not fit for Saturday. So yeah, I mean, I can't if we if we start no like, Kaka up top, we're really just asking for trouble. So <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'd I'd have Gray starting on Saturday. Uh, with Charleston, maybe maybe not. We'll see. But Andre Gray up top would uh, yeah, that that's fine. Well, we, the thing is, well, I think well, obviously Andre Gray went at Turf Moor when they played Liverpool. He he, he scored a couple. Yeah, of, that was quality from him. But I think. He just rejuvenated the whole place when he came in yesterday. Obviously, that quality announcement from Watford with the football manager thing. But um, oh god, yeah, <laughs> that was that was pretty good. I actually but, rated. Yeah, that I know. It was, it was it was kind of just I, they they got up to a tea, got off to a tea really. But you think about the other one they did. I mean, we don't want to dwell on it too much, but I think it was uh, the Challenge one. Oh my god, that went, the the Twitter went oh, into meltdown. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, just touching on Dini, I think. Obviously, he is, he is a talisman for the club. He's done a lot for Watford, but I don't, a lot of people were saying he's not a guaranteed starter. I mean, like back end of last season, he felt Matt Zara and him did fall out quite a bit, and it was kind of seeing that he look, looked a bit of a bad egg, and he thought he was bigger than the club. Would you agree with that, or is that just a bit of an overreaction? Nah, not at all. I heard that uh, with last season, Dini was saying that, uh, like, just Mazzari lost the uh, lost the dressing room and mm. stuff. I, so I don't. With he has changed since his new contract, and that's that's not really a good sign. But he definitely doesn't think he's bigger than the club because if he thought he's bigger than the club, then why is he being linked away with West Brom and stuff? Which yeah, is, is definitely a sideways step. So. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand that. But I think just going back onto Andre Gray, I mean, 
analysing the signing and transfer more, 18.5 million club record fee. I mean, for a player with one year left on his contract, he rejected a deal from Burnley. Is that a little bit too much? I know a lot of people were kind of a bit sceptical, but I was having this, this conversation with my dad and he was saying how, well, kind of we had to we had to pay over the odds for him because we didn't really have another option, if you know what I mean. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't think it's too much. I mean, with one year left on his contract, you would have... You would have wanted him. Uh, you would have wanted to get to get him for a bit less. But when players like Michael Keane are going for twenty five million and stuff, it, it's the homegrown market. And I think all clubs out there's a lot of clubs out there so desperate for a striker. He's Premier League proven. He's absolutely rapid. Uh, Eighteen point five million. Yeah. Well, that'll be nothing. No, it, no it's like the, I agree, it's yeah. like the Pogba. It's like the Pogba thing last year when everyone was raving about him for eighty nine million, and now. Liverpool have rejected, I think it was 90 million this morning for yeah, him. Yeah, 90 million. So, I think, oh, incredible. So, I think, yeah, so next next year when you could have you could have someone like Okaka going for, going for 15 and then you think, well, look at it. So. <laughs> that would be an absolute steal. Like, that, to be honest, that, yeah. I actually rate Okaka, I'm not going to lie. Like, I think off the bench, obviously he's not a star, we all know that, but like off the bench, he does cause defenders a handful and he's, he's good in the air as we saw against Everton last season, but... I don't know. I know. I know you don't really he's, like him. You've had games. Nah, a I'm a bit. I'm a bit. Yeah, I'm a bit against him. Like to be fair, like I've gone. To, I, I stupidly went to all the away games as well last year, mm-hmm. and like against Chelsea, I think he. I'm pretty sure. No, he came off the bench at one. Obviously, he scored the equaliser. And he looked good there, but again, it's just it's something about him. Like he never really looks like he's going to score. Mm. Which yeah, I know. You like. Mean. It's, it's a bit odd. He's a bit of a, a bit clumsy, a, a clunky player and clumsy. And yeah, yeah. He's always on the floor and moaning, and he's. On, <laughs> oh, it's just, it's just a bit. I don't know. It's just a bit much for me. No, I know. I, I think, like I said, I think he's a good impact sub, and he's yeah. like, he's, he's a plan B really. But exactly, I think for we, four million, yeah. it's a good, it's a good that buy. Is, and yeah, if we yeah. could, if we could sell him on, then uh, yeah, brilliant. I, I, that's the thing. Like, we we're not really like blessed with a lot of attacking options. Like. Well, out and out strikers. Now we've got Gray, Deeney, Akaka. Does Sinclair have a future at the club? We'll have to wait and see. I'm yeah, not, I'm not I, too sure. Nah, I saw him against uh, I saw him against Villa, and uh, he's just he's he, he's he's quite raw, I think, mm. and he needs to I mean, be. He needs young, to go. Out. He is young, and I th- there's a future for him, but not this season. Yeah, agreed. Um, but yeah, I think we've got three strikers who are kind of challenging for that. That first team spot, well, really, Deeney and uh, Gray. But like, I think, like I touched on previously, how Deeney, I don't know if he is guaranteed a starting place when he comes back. Because, say, if we pick up, let's say, well, we, we take a draw against Liverpool anyway. And then we go into the other games and say, maybe nick a win. And we're starting with, we, we've had a good start. Does Deeney coming back into the side? That's the challenge we're going to face. Like, Yeah, that is true. And his, obviously, his fitness isn't on the same level mm. so he's gonna have to he's gonna have to pull his weight but I, I get I, w- with Will Hughes I actually see as you were saying earlier you could have Deeney off Gray Pereira out wide and then uh Will Hughes coming off the bench because him coming off the bench for almost every game against tired defenses that would actually cause a lot of trouble that is yeah I haven't really thought about that but I yeah. mean a lot of people thought Will Hughes was gonna go straight into the team um, but our midfield is looking uh, very strong at the minute. You look at exactly. the midfield too, you've got Decore and Chalaba, I think will probably start. Yeah. I mean, Cleverly, I don't, I don't know if Cleverly's mm. going to be featuring a lot exactly. this season, But I think it just says it all. With, and that's why I think Kapu could, should Kapoor's be on his well, way out. Bloody hell, keep exactly, you make, exactly, that's why um, I think it is a bit of a controversial one, but I am one who really does want Kapu to leave like he's mm, he's done I a agree. good job six million like he's on his day he's an absolutely brilliant player but he we can't we have such a good midfield and we have so much depth we can't afford to play Kapu and be like well he's gonna like once a month he'll have a blinder like that's yeah, that's exactly. not enough like, <laughs> he always starts just really well and just fades away exactly and I just remember when um when he came, uh, I think it was... Was it Flores' first signing? It was like July the... Yeah, it was. It was, like, it was right at the start of July. It's like a uh, record yeah, signing. Yeah, exactly. And it was like the change of Watford bringing in someone from Tottenham. Oh, he's a Tottenham reject. But exactly. it was big for Watford at the time. It was, yeah. But like, it's just like we've got to a point where we just don't need him anymore. 
exactly. And he's aging, and we would get a good price for him. It's like in today's market, and I think people do think he's a lot better than he actually is mm. because he does make headlines when he has his blinder, but then when he's quiet for three weeks, just there's just no mention of it. Exactly. So if if you got if we sold him for like six to eight million, then I'd be I'd be chuffed. And then we and then we've got. Ben Watson as well. I mean, I don't. Really yeah, think I think he's got a lot of. I mean, I like. I wouldn't at the start of the window. I was like, I'd be okay with them with letting him go. But if like, um, I think it was the Santola manager who said he's not willing to spend two million on him. Mm. And I was like, well, if if we're gonna, if we're not going to sell him, like if we're not able to sell him for two million, then what's the point of selling him at all? Exactly. He, he'd be. I mean, he's a good person to have around the dressing room. Exactly. Day, but it's it's a it's a bit like Mary Apple with in defence. Yeah, I think he's still true. Watson in midfield, like. Yeah, that's the thing with Watson. I mean, that first season under Flores, I, th- I think probably he was so crucial to us staying up. Like, towards the end, I mean, we weren't picking up yeah. a lot of wins. But I just thought Watson, he's so underrated just because he's ginger. I mean, I'm not being funny <laughs> yet. But because he's not like one of those fancy players, like, yeah, fancy yeah, haircut. I get you. you know I do I mean? get yeah. you. But, yeah, I do know what you mean. Yeah, it's just, I think, he just, he gets a lot of stick, but I don't really think that's deserved. But... I think nah. I don't know if anyone would actually want wants Watson, but exactly, not many people are interested, and he he'd be a good squad player like in the cups and stuff, and mm. if we do get injuries, but we have exactly. Oh god, I went to that <laughs> one, don't even don't remind me. But uh, yeah, like I just think like with cleverly as well. If if cleverly's not a starter, then just uh, yeah, there's no point in selling Watson for exactly. So just just keep him, you know, let him retire here <laughs> at the Vic. Testimonial. <laughs> yeah. I'd go into that, to be fair. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think cleverly, where will he will start on Saturday? We'll have to wait and see. But going on to Saturday, Liverpool, massive game. I'm I'm looking forward to it so oh, much. I'm, I can't wait to yeah, go back. Yeah, I really am. Yeah, it's uh, going to be quality. Um, what would be... Um, your predicted team. What would you? What would your team, team right. be? Right, I was going to do a video on this, but I'll t- I'll do it now. If, if people oh. watching it. All right. Um. So in goal, I'd go for Gomez. Right back, uh, I'd go. I think he's Yamat's fit, isn't he? Yeah, Yamat's fit. Yamat's fit. Prodal, obviously. Um. Oh, it's this big one. Kaf got a Cabaselli. Oh, that, that's a. That's now nah, they're both injured. Both injured. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. No, Cabaselli. No, Cathcart had like a knock. Last time Cab- I checked, Cathcart went in. Was an injured. Must be. Yeah. I think he, but Cabaselli went off against Villa. Oh no! So I think we're stuck with Britos and Cavall. I thought they were like only knocks; so they could just come back. Right, Britos then. Maybe I don't know. Right, Britos will have to go left, uh, left centre back. Obviously, Holabas at left back. Yeah. Right mid. Uh, I might have to be Amrabat, you know. But I mean, we got success, but I don't think he's gonna start. Nah. I don't think anyone could trust him tracking back, to be honest. That's true. Yeah. And then. I'd go to Corey Chalibur in the midfield. Yeah, in the defensive mid. Yeah, and then left mid. I'd, I'd throw Louis Charleston in there. Yeah, me. so would I. And then just behind the striker, I think he'll go for... I think he'll go cleverly. Do you think? Mm, no th- Pereira? Oh, shit, yeah, Pereira, yeah. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. What, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, no, I was speaking to my dad, the other, yes, I think it was just yesterday. And I was, he was, he was naming the team, and he was like, "Oh, cleverly behind the striker." And I was like, "Dad, you know Pereira?" And he, he's like, "Oh God, our team's looking, <laughs> looking decent." Now you, yeah, now you've done the same. I, I keep forgetting him, but um, yeah. yeah I, the thing is, I think it go two ways. He's either going to put Pereira on the left, which I d- hope he doesn't, and then he's going to put Richarlison on the bench and play cleverly in behind. Yeah, or he's he going to go Richarlison that. left, Pereira behind, and then I think he'll start with Gray. I would be surprised if he didn't. I don't know yeah, that's about. true. Yeah, there's no point. There's no point signing him yeah. on what uh, Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, on a Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. I'll, he's I'll he's had pre season everything. Like that's true. Yeah, John Marks was saying in the interview, like um, I think he was saying how you've had a full pre season and stuff. Yeah, so, saw that. Yeah, so I, I think that was a good interview, by the way. But um, yeah, yeah I, I think it would be great to see him uh, at Vicarage Road, and I think. I think it's going to be kind of obviously we've looked at Marcus Silva's home record and it's a super. I think sixty-seven percent. I was and last season we were forty-three percent. So uh, yeah. yeah, and I thought last season at home we weren't too bad. Yeah, I thought we weren't too bad. I mean, we did get rolled over by some of the big teams. I yeah, de- but, yeah, yeah, but we uh, we done the job over the smaller teams. So exactly. that was that was yeah. enough. Right, but, I'd say yeah, go on. predicted team for my one. Yeah, go on. Wait, are we doing predicted team or... I'd say predicted or preferred team. preferred 11, that's the thing. 
Yeah, I'd have predicted. All right, nice one. If it was preferred, I'd have Ben Watson at striker. So, <laughs> uh, oh. but for, for, right, we'll do predicted. I'll do uh, Gomez. Yeah. And goal. Right back, I'd have Jan Matt. He actually looked good on Saturday. Yeah, so. I, I like Jan Matt. He's so solid. Like, you can just uh, on him. Yeah. Centre back. I'm not a big Kabul fan, as oh, some God, people know. No. So, I love him. I love Brithos and Podol. Yeah, uh, Hollabath left back. Yeah, Decorey and Chalaba in the defensive mid. Then, mm. right mid. It's either going to be... I'm thinking Feminia. Oh, that's a shout, actually. I forgot about him. But then, yeah, I'd have Feminia. I'm a big fan of him. I think the then... thing is with Feminia, I, 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 th- I actually rate him. He, he reminded me kind of um, when Bellerin came to us on loan. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, he yeah, did, he did he? does. Um, but I think the thing is with Feminia, he's quite, like Sinclair, he's quite raw. And I think he could be caught out on the right because obviously he hasn't yeah. played a lot of Premier League fixtures. But I think... Oh, it's between him and Amrabat. It's who he trusts, really. Exactly. I think... But the thing is, with Feminia, he has got similar traits as Amrabat, but except he hasn't got the physi- the physicality, mm. but he's got a better end product. Yeah, that is true. And I think I think that's, like, more important. Yeah, I, so I'd I agree. So I'd probably... I'd probably... If we could get... Saying that, I think Amrabat could be another one who could be shipped off. Could be off. Back to Spain, probably. Yeah. But I'd have, yeah. Who I'd have, uh, left mid? Uh... See the thing of success, he's he's actually looked better yeah. in pre season. His attitude's better. I saw him at like Wimbledon and, and uh Villa and stuff and Silva likes him going forward but he cannot stand his positioning and how lazy he is tracking back. <laughs> so <laughs> I think with Charlison oh, considering oh, considering he was at the game and stuff, I'd have I think Richarlison would be That'd in there. Be so good. Uh per, I'd have Pereira behind I think I think Pereira will be behind Andre Gray, hopefully. Hopefully. That, the thing that is, could... like, with Gray, sorry, I'll let, I'll let you finish these seconds. With Gray, I think he, I think he's almost nailed on to start, but with Richarlson, I'd be disappointed to see Silver go and kind of go a bit conservative and then put Cleverly in the midfield and then put yeah. Gray on the left. That's what I'm hoping he does, and he just puts Richarlson on the left. Yeah. I think he'll drop Cleverly. Ho- well, I'm hoping he does, but it could go yeah. two ways. So what are you going to say? No, I was going to like cleverly uh, on Saturday, like in midfield, he looked he looked quite good, but he's just it's just not his role. He's not an attacking midfielder, mm. and he's not got that. He's not he's an engine for sure, definitely. He's he's everywhere. But if we're gonna break, if Marco Silva wants us to break with pace, you want Andre Gray, you want Richarlison, you want Feminia or Success or Amabat, whoever it is. You don't want Okaka and Cleverly, like <laughs> seriously. And I know. Yeah. if we have Okaka, if you have Okaka up top, who've they got a centre back? Lovewood, oh, Matip. They're gonna, they're just gonna win everything in the, too uh, good. in the air. I rate yeah, exactly. Matip, I do. I think Lovren's always got mistaken him, but Matip, since um, I've I've watched Liverpool just just on Sky Sports, he's looked very good. Um, yeah, he has. But. I think it would. It, I'm just hoping for the first game we just give it a real good goal, real good goal. Exactly. Sam Jamaican there, real good goal, <laughs> <laughs> and just I don't know, just give it. I, th- I honestly, that Liverpool back line is shaky to say the least. It is exactly. We go with You've Gray, got... we go with Charleston, we go with Pereira in the middle, not on the left, and we could. Mm. I reckon we could. I reckon we can nick it. I'd go as far as say <laughs> that. Like, uh, I think we could definitely get a point. The thing is, I think we'll perform well. I think they could take the lead, mm. like late in the first half, and second half take it to them, get the equaliser, get a point, and if we get anything from Liverpool, that's that's brilliant. And then we go to then we go to Bournemouth, oh. that could that that could easily go either way. Honestly, with Gray and stuff against what Steve Cook and Simon Francis, we yeah. we could. But it, it, again, they've got King and Defoe, so that's the thing. It's like... a, it's defensively we do need to improve. Like we've got the priority, mm. but now we have gotta get the goalie, the centre back, the left back, left back especially. Left we have back. We'll, we'll go Holab- on to that. Hornet Shane asked oh. the asked the question, but oh, Holabas, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, with Holabas, I, I, he is the grumpiest man in football, but <laughs> I do. He's done, he has done well for Watford. I, I just, yeah, he, he's solid. But he's, he's how old is he? Like thirty three now. He must be. Yes, I think he's thirty three, and you know he signed for what? Like I think it was just under two million. Yeah, so it's been a, it's business. been a great buy, but 
yeah, just you, we can get rid of him now. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Um, but I reckon he'll start on Saturday. And obviously, we spoke about Richarlson. Then we'll go on to some Twitter questions. A lot of people actually sent them in. Um, but with Richarlson, I was reading, uh, I think it was on the Watford official website, how... Uh, Felipe Giraldi was speaking really highly of him. That they'd they'd be, he's, they'd be Richardson had been on like the scouting network since around November, and they were pursuing him. And they were saying how there was a couple of big clubs. I think one of them might be in Chelsea, who they wanted him. Uh, was it? Yeah, was it I saw Milan? Uh, AC Milan, Ajax, and Chelsea. Oh, and we and we've like. We've got him. I'm really happy. Yeah, about yeah, that uh, makes it sound yeah. better. Ajax, Ajax weren't happy on Twitter. Mm. If, if you if you did see him, oh yeah, was there was one more an fan. absolute laugh. <laughs> it's, it's the fact that we sold Berghaus to final just made him so much more annoyed as well. <laughs> there was like God. one more, like a Watford of all clubs, like oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But um, you were saying about obviously Amrabat Femenia. Is Femenia natural? I think is he more of a right wing back or is he a right midfielder or right back? I s- or can he play all of them? Like I. Like I do watch La Liga and stuff, so yeah. I, I have seen him before. And uh, he last season he played, he played as a right back. Mm. But when He's he attacking. was in, um, when he was in the Segunda, which is the second division, he played right wing. And Alaves going full, it, Alaves actually played a lot like in the second division. Played a lot like Watford when we were in the Championship. Like it was a lot like attacking wise, we looked brilliant. We. Like when we had Vidro and Dini yeah. and Forestieri, like they had a lot of creativity going going forward, and I think that's pretty much why. Like defensively, they weren't they weren't brilliant, Alaves, but attacking wise, they just blew the they just blew the league apart. So that's I think that I'm pretty sure they Good won signs. the Segunda. So like he literally is so versatile. He can play right wing, he can play right back. Like defensively, he is good enough because he's done it against. Uh, he's done it against Neymar. He's done it against Ronaldo. Like, and Alaves beat Barcelona at Camp Nou last season oh, when he was at right back. So, it literally is it's a brilliant buy. Like on a free transfer, you can play right back or right wing. So that's the thing. I knew if you knew what he was like, because obviously you watch a lot of La Liga. Then I was kind of going on what your opinion was, because our probably all the what fans probably on Twitter anyway. You watch a lot of La League, so I, I, I was quite happy that you were positive about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was because I heard like we were linked to them, so mm. and I, I think I remember tweeting on when it was a Copa del Rey final to, to like get people to watch it because again like, uh, I think I'm pretty sure they lost three one that day, but yeah, again it was like against Barcelona, it's, they 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 just, they were a good team and he was one of their star men, so. Just his pace, his attitude, uh, like he couldn't, it, like on a free transfer as well. It's just, I think it's just really underrated business. Fair enough. I'll, I'll have to take your word for it. But yeah, um, I think should we let's have a look at some of the questions, right? So yeah, right. Hornet Shane, we were talking about Hollabass. He goes, we need a left back. Who would you go for now that the Gibbs de- deal is dead? I mean, uh, Gibbs is off, I think, because obviously they're yeah. asking for 15, 16 million. It's 16 million, absolute joke. Yeah. So uh, anyone like you think we could go for realistically? Who would I? I don't really. Obviously, uh, I saw the, the whole Marina thing. Do we need one? Definitely, 100%. Uh, if you look at it, if you take it this way, Holabas got 14 yellow cards last year. Mm. So that was at least. So that's at least two league games we'd have to play Brandon Mason in yeah uh he was one off a three match suspension <laughs> he could easily get a red card he could easily get injuries Brad like listen like I I love Brandon Mason as, like as much as the next man but like if if he's coming up against uh Spurs and City and Arsenal he he will he will get skinned I saw him at I saw him at Millwall and on the ball, he's he's good and he's got a brilliant attitude. And two to three years, I genuinely do believe he could challenge to 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 play to be like a first team. Mm. But it's it, it, it's just too fast for me. It, it, like the game, the Premier League, it's just far too much for him. And if if Holabas, imagine if Holabas got injured, like. The reoccurring injuries you had last year with like Yanma and Amrabat yeah. with the hamstring injuries. If that happened to Holabas, 
Mason could be playing 20, 25 games. That's... I love him, but come no, on, the thing we, is, we I do like Mason need one. As well. Yeah, we do need a left back. I, I do like Brandon Mason. I think his attitude is superb. Like He's probably one of the few um, kind of academy graduates we've had in a long time yeah. who can actually go through the ranks and play in the first team. Well, we've seen him play exactly. in the first team, but re- on a regular basis. Exactly. But I just, I mean, the game that stood out for me was when he came in, uh, was it against City last game of the season? Oh. And he, we, he was up against Gabriel Jesus. And don't get me wrong, he was very good at, in spells, but sometimes just exactly Jesus it's, just had him. Like yeah, exactly. Like he, and he, the thing is, he is a short player. Like he has got, he's a bit bulky, so he can muscle off players and stuff. But he's short, so in the air, he's not winning anything. Mm. He's not the quickest player. If there's a quick, if if he came up against Amrabat, who's quicker, stronger, and taller than him. He'd be, he'd be in trouble, exactly. So, uh, I couldn't... Of a left-back, it's hard to tell. Like, Moreno's there, but Moreno's they want, a lot of they debate want on 10 to 15. I genuinely think it'd be a good signing. I, I agree with you, yeah. I mean, but, a lot of people are going on about how... Um, I think I, I tweeted um, how people were kind of saying he's poor defensively, but he was in a team... Liverpool, like Liverpool is an attacking team. Don't get like it is probably the most attacking team, or they're the best going, one of the best going teams going yeah, in the league. Yeah, definitely. He was more kind of analysed for his defensive ability. And exactly. We, we didn't get to see what he could do going forward, and I think yeah. un, in in a Watford side where we're going to have to defend at points, but we do get chance to go forward. I think it would be a re- it would be a clever buy because you look at his pace; he's absolutely electric. He's got a great left foot on him. And for the price, a similar price for Gibbs, I think you and he's younger as well. I exactly. Mean, younger? Yeah, I think he is. Yeah, yeah, he is. Gibbs is like twenty-eight. Yeah, so I, I think it would be a good signing. But I think recalls the, this new Twitter account called uh, Rich Olsen, Um He actually kind of mentioned Mason, so I'll see if you can answer this one. So he says the chance of players such as Mason and Dion breaking through, or at least playing some part, larger than last season. So basically, he's saying, do you think? Mason or yeah. Pereira can have a part of the season. Um, maybe FA Cup. But. I think I think Pereira and Mason and Felivi are the three who will get game time. Mm. Uh, I literally cannot say his name. Elef, do you? Or uh, Elef Arroyo? Yeah, something like that. Okay, uh, yeah, I can't pronounce happy. his name. But um, yeah, I, I went to Woken as well. That was like the development one. And... He just, I've seen him at City, I've seen him there. He he's just seems very awkward. And we've got a lot of depth and I think he's a right back. So we, we've got a lot of depth in right back. Mm. So I don't see him breaking through. Uh, Felivi actually excites me more than Dion Pereira because uh, Felivi, oh, he, he's got, he's quick, great skill. He's got some great skills. If he came off the bench. He came on against Stoke last season, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 and he's just he's just got the confidence to play. Where the the thing with Dion Pereira, I like him, and I like how he plays. But he's quite polished for a youngster. But he he actually does need a bit more confidence. He needs to drive at players. He needs to take players on, mm. and that's what I think. If he played in the the cup, I know it's the it's the cup draw today, the second round. So I don't we'll know who we've up. got. Yeah. But if we got if we did get like. A Barnet or a, oh, that'd be cool. like a Super. although 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 I'm sure we haven't won in the, I still call it the Carling Cup don't know <laughs> but if, uh, if the we haven't won in the, yeah well we haven't the League Cup I'll say we haven't won uh, a game in the League Cup since like 2011 and I've gone to every single one I can't mm. even like Doncaster oh, I remember Bradford. The days. Oh uh, no no Barnet Mike... away I think it was Watford at Barnet away and it was like Mike Williamson at centre back. And then he, oh, like, next week God. he went to Portsmouth. Oh, don't even. <laughs> I've got, the thing is, I've gone to, like, Preston away. I've gone Jeez. to... I've gone to these, and... I need to go... I don't know fair. why. Like, honestly, we... But if we did play... Uh, every year I say it, but we do have a good backup team to play in the Cup. Mm. If we played Pereira, Mason, and Felivi, and you just tell them, like... Just express yourselves. Don't be stupid. That's, Don't, that's the thing. But just, just express yourselves, and that's what that's what you want from youngsters at these games. You just want them to drive at players, to to like impress, to get the fans off their feet. And that's if, the thing with Mason last season. 
Sorry, the, the thing with Mason last season is yeah. everyone was a bit surprised because we were going through a spell under Matt Sorry where it was negative. Every game we were going into it thinking, oh, we're going to be able to pick up a point. That like that was Mason. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But Mason actually like stood up out of stood out out of all the players. But I think when mm. we saw kind of Pereira, I mean Pereira kind of got a standing ovation. I think it was at Leicester away or something. But yeah. it was like that last game against City. They all just looked a little bit scared to just. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I actually didn't go to Leicester away because after Holloway, I was like, <laughs> I'm not going to... Oh, I can't even... Be arsed. Like, exactly, I can't even be arsed. But <laughs> I heard he'd done like, a really good cross or something and he, he had a good game. So that's probably why he won Young Player of the Year. But exactly, at City away, Mason tried, but Jesus was just too good for him. Mm. Pereira didn't really express himself. I think Felipe was out on loan to Coventry then, so he didn't play. But... Although he he actually hasn't got as much game time as the rest, the one who excites me more is Felivi. And yeah. I hope Marco Silva sees that in him because I saw him at Wimbledon, I saw him at Stoke, I saw him at Woking, and he's the one who stands out the most for me. Because mm, I've seen I've seen a lot of videos where uh, they kind of bring up, uh, well, they put the under-23 players into the train with the first-team squad, which is always good. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it, I think it would be good to see some players have a go in the first team. Exactly. But, but I just think it's... It, obviously, nowadays, it's so kind of money-orientated that a lot of our managers have, haven't got a lot of... Don't get a lot of time, as we've seen with our managers. Yeah. But, like, they haven't got a lot of time to kind of build in the, the youth players mm. into the squad. But I think, to be fair, in Mark Silva's case, a lot of people... Well, what fans know this, that the project's been set out and he's here, I think, for the long run. Well, yeah, definitely. Yeah, exactly. So it would be good to see... Some of these players, like Mason and Pereira, as uh, mm. the person mentioned, and they, and they all play like in the formation. Like Felivi plays can play as a striker or a winger. Mason plays as a left back. Pereira can play anywhere, left, right, or just as a ten. So, mm. how many games they will get, I don't know. I think it will be sim- as like a similar story to last season, where if we're if we're in, on like a bad game, say two 0 down at Stoke and whatever, Why they not? can come on. But I. I, I don't think it'll be any more or any less than last season. Fair enough. That's a good answer. So we've yeah. done one, two... Well, I can count, bloody hell. Um, going, to the, <laughs> going on to the next one. So we'll go for a deal. Uh, he says, uh, we've made some great signings, but so have some other clubs around us. How do you think our window compares to theirs? This is quite a kind of... Uh, yeah, it's quite a big question, so yeah. I don't know um, going to take I've a while to answer it. I've done a little piece on it. I haven't released it yet. But I do think Watford have had, uh, I mean, we've had one of the strongest windows in the Premier League. But for me, it's, I think I saw, I think I saw um, Simply Watford tweet as well. Mm. I think it has been probably arguably our best transfer window ever. The only one I can think that compares is 2012 when the Pozzos first came oh. in and got Fidro and Fossieri and released the likes of like... Garner and Eustace and they were Lumos and <laughs> like that was yeah, like yeah. obviously that was brilliant but Mark Yates <laughs> oh god <laughs> big concern you know the absolute days but yeah I think this is definitely one of our best trans windows in a long time they've listened to what the fans want they've seen what's needed they've played the fringe some of the fringe players in pre-season and noticed that See if uh, like the, the ones exactly yeah. uh, so I think they've just kind of nailed every position and Holabas and Gomez and uh, whatever they can they can play a few games until the transfer window ends but there's still time to sign a goalie to sign a left, a left back, back yeah. to sign a centre back or and then there's yeah that's the thing I think it's always good to have a bit of stability when you're going to the next season you don't want obviously a, a whole new team that's just well, we've, exactly. done, we've done that before, but we've done it before. We we came close, but yeah. it, there was there was clearly weaknesses, and mm. we weren't gonna. It wasn't gonna be the. First, I think it took what three seasons, and yeah, yeah. it's obviously it wasn't gonna take the first year. It's not like it's not like right get all these quality yeah. players in because on paper we we had the best team in the league, but it doesn't it doesn't work like that. You need them to gel, and it took until 2015. And if that, I st- I think if that team was in the championship now, that would that would walk it. You had mm. you had three strikers scoring over twenty goals or just under twenty with Vincent Dini Agalo. You had mm. Abdi and Forestieri. You had 
we you had Minari and Guardiola and stuff like it. It would it would genuinely just walk over it because it's. But exactly, I just think. The thing uh, what annoys like, me right about the pundits and all the journalists is when they go on. Oh, Watford this year they made fourteen signs. Oh, this isn't year it? they made twelve. But the thing is, what do you do? You just want us to keep the same team and exactly, and, <laughs> exactly in the relegation battle. That's what they, really annoys me. It does because they complain that we change, but. We change for a better reason. Our team since twenty well, since twenty thirteen mm. has improved every single year. And what I think what we came thirteenth the first the first time in the Premier League and last last year we came seventeenth, but that's because once we got the forty points we that was it. Like we just we just Stop. completely died down. If we had kept going, I think it, we only needed like six points to come ninth or eighth. So it just it just it just shows like our team and obviously we had all the injuries so our team does improve every year our managers <coughs> f- beside Wally has improved every year so yeah I just think like Paul Merson and that they oh can all God. they can all put us down I there, acknowledge but... that in the video oh my day I was and so oh, yeah yeah, yeah. It's about uh, everything about the way he says everything he does like, it and he. Oh. He's put us down there for a year, and we've been relegation favourites in 2010, 2011, 2015, 2016, and now we're relegation favourites again. We haven't been relegated since 2006. Exactly. Like exactly like. I know, it's just they can. They. Stupid. It's these. It's these pundits who actually it's don't. The ex-pros. You think exactly. They know it it's all, but the, they don't. Exactly. They're like the behind journal- the times completely. Exactly, and the journalists are far better than the pundits. And the journalists, That's true, yeah, yeah. they're that not all of them are perfect, but a lot of them do actually understand that we are one of the best run clubs in the country. So, mm. if you if you if you know Watford, you know that we're doing the right thing, and we've got a good project on the go. Exactly, exactly. And the, and then the, now you look at Aaron. I couldn't get my words out. Bloody hell, <laughs> <laughs> Aaron. I mean, we've touched on this before, but what areas do we need to strengthen in left back, goalie, we centre back? Yeah. That's pretty self-explanatory. But then we do need to we do need to get players off our hands. We've got mm. I was saying this the other day, I mean Okaka he could be a backup, yeah, like if he stays or goes it's I'm kind of content either way, but you've got more players like Pantilabon, Arlauskis, uh Kabul, Britos has turned thirty two, Holobas has turned thirty three. You've got players there who do need to go Deadwood. and Exactly, Deadwood. Uh, Bryce JJ, he's looked okay, but he could Nothing go defend. The his exactly. So, and there's no point keeping a player on his wage, which I assume is about twenty to thirty thousand, maybe a little less or more. Um, but there's no point keeping someone on that high wage if they're only playing in the League Cup because we could have we could promote a right back who does the exact same job. Mm, and that's the thing, I think. Well, basically, you've just said. I think the way we could strengthen is by getting people out because just mm. kind of tightening the squad down, getting it kind of. We know our first eleven, and then we know the players that are kind of just on the edge of getting into the first team. But I mean, yeah, exactly. JJ, like, I mean, uh, I've never. I mean, what was it? Millwall way. And I like, saw him at Millwall, and I saw. I didn't. I didn't go to Burton at home, but uh, I went to. I went to Millwall when I went to Wimbledon, and. Going forward, he's decent. Like, mm. I, Across but the he's house in Wimbledon was pretty good. It's, yeah, but the the problem is that um, he's a lot. He's literally almost identical to Brandon Mason. That's true, and if yeah. we have, and the problem is we've he's on a higher wage. He's older. He's he's not homegrown. Like he's kind of got a good history, so we could just easily ship him off. Mm. I think I think he's one of those who. It was unfortunate for him because I think he came in and then um, it, it was it was before the start of the 2016-17 season and I think it was was it Amrabat and Amrabat came through pre-season and then he fancied him and then up to Christmas Amrabat was just superb. I think yeah. he was playing uh, yeah he's playing right mids but I think um, or whatever wherever he's playing but Amrabat was just really really good and then up to Christmas then when he came back from injury it was awful but oh yeah yeah but um, another question we've got um, Jezza who Jezza at Jezza 2902 who goes what do you think of the change in transfers with homegrown players joining us so more English and British players uh, I think I've seen Marco Silva saying that he wants 
the whole English to be spoken, obviously. I think it's probably because of all the meltdown of that Wally well, can't speak English, which did my head in, to be that honest. Is, but yeah. I mean, it it is a it is a positive, but it does it doesn't really matter. You've got, for example, you had like, well, actually, I'll use a different example. Uh, Montero, he can't speak a word of English for Swansea, but he's had some quality seasons there and stuff. So I think communication isn't actually a massive a massive deal but again it's another positive but it's more to do with the prices with how much they cost and how little we've bought them for that is true yeah i mean we've probably the business we have done is at oh my god it's it's superb absolutely superb and then people are complaining about andre gray but igalo we sold igalo for 25 that is yeah so if we're bringing in andre gray who's quicker who's more prolific who's homegrown I think he's younger or the same age. Mm. There's, there can be no... Uh, and for what? Uh, to 7.5 million less? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 6.5 million less? Like, you can't, you can't, really complain. can't complain. That's the thing. A lot of people... I mean, a lot of what fans like have been seeing are going... Well, we've over, a little bit overpaid for him in the comment section anyway for that. That video I did mm. uh, yesterday. But a lot of people are quick to forget the signings we've... Well, the, not the signings, the players we've... We've let go, for example, Igalo, and we yeah. made like we bought in a striker, in my opinion, who is better than Igalo. Oh, who had definitely. one season wonder. Well, I mean, in the championship, he had a, not really he had a one well. year wonder. He went, I think it was from 2015 to the end of 2016. He had that one year that was just brilliant. And then from there on, <laughs> just went yeah. downhill. The first, the first, I think first of January from 2015. That's when he started kicking in, mm. and then he just stopped around the. Tottenham game which was I think New Year's Day yeah yeah when we oh, lost 2-1 yeah. so yeah so it was like it well, just was shows the, you was that the one where Kapu well we'll talk about Kapu in a minute but that, that, that works quite well but was that the one where Kapu like not made three players oh that was the away one. Oh, was the away oh okay oh. yeah yeah fair enough yeah, yeah. oh again that would again like people were like oh brilliant from Kapu he, he done jammy. the triple nutmeg yeah, and then went he off played the I think yeah, and then I think he plays. It's like a guy who's offside. So it's like, it really uh, uh, what's the point? <laughs> uh, he just does. He just does my head in. I yeah. think. And then Cap- oh, Capu's mentioned again by Jezza. Two questions for him. Fair play. He's gone. <laughs> um, will Capu leave in this window? I think we kind of said how you wanted him to go. Yeah, I want him to go. Will he? I think he will because he's probably on a fairly high wage and his price is. Like his value it's is crazy. quite a lot. Well, I mean, if it is a lot, but as in he's not. I think he's going to be more than the six million. But if he's not getting games, it's just it's only going to go down, I guess, won't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. with the whole bust up thing that's oh, come yeah. out, what, what, uh, what paper was that? Was, was that the mirror? Uh, I think it was the mirror or something. Mirror, it's yeah, not yeah. the it's not the most reliable. But yeah. <laughs> he was then he was then left out of the squad for Villa. So and he's he's not going to get he's not going to get a look. To, yeah. He's not going to get a look in. So if we do get rid of him, and I think it's 80% we will, 20% we won't, then brilliant. But we do need someone to take him. It's not like... Yeah. So I, I haven't I don't want seen... him sitting around in the dressing room, to be honest. Exactly. exactly. And I've, yeah. I've heard he's not the most favoured in the dressing room as well. So it's not like he's one. He's not like a good one to have around the dressing room. It's actually... Yeah. The opposite, really so yeah. it's best. It's best we get rid of him, but we we need someone to take him. And there's been no links of us selling anyone really recently. That's so the thing. I thought when at Villa Park, I was watching it on uh, the YouTube on Villa's YouTube oh, channel. Oh yeah. And um, I think I can't believe that is a massive coincidence. Like that must have been something in that story. Exactly. He yeah. started every single game. He was, although. Apparently he wasn't playing well. He did score a winner, I think, against Ibar or something. Mm. So, like, and then he started all of them. He started against Wimbledon, and then he just doesn't even get in the lineup or yeah, not I even think, in the. Bench. I think Kapu started so well, but he just. I thought he. I, I was so surprised when um, Matt Sorry just kept picking him every single oh, week. Oh my god! And I was just thinking every to myself, week. what was going on, like that. It was just favouritism. I'm sorry. Like, wh- how can you play? There was, he was a player who was playing probably some of his worst football, mm. and he played the, but effectively the whole season. I think uh, I was. I think 
Mazari turned dead to me when he put Pantillamon and Gil Martin on the same bench <laughs> and then didn't even sub on Gil Martin. Gee, I think that, that was that that was, that was the moment like the point that was the moment where I was like, I don't even care like I think that was actually the moment when I thought like if he hadn't if Mazari had stayed for this season, we would actually be like the next Sunderland or the next Villa, like yeah, it, it just it, it, it literally just got to a joke at that at that mm, point. It was so. I mean, it got to a joke where some old granny then brought a um, oh god, <laughs> <laughs> um, like it, yeah, I mean the, that was the tragic. amount of moments that went the most like the amount of tragic moments that happened last season. It's just it started off so <sighs> brightly and just faded away. Gradually. And we still, we still, I think it was six points clear with a better goal difference. So it just and then it the just thing shows is, we like beat United, with United. So what does that make United? Let's put it. Let's put it that is right. true. <laughs> but, but then um, we then we, then we lost to Gillingham. So oh my god, Jesus! That was one of the worst <laughs> games of football I've ever seen. <laughs> like Bradley Dak that was, was running the show. He <laughs> actually was as well. <laughs> oh, absolutely tragic. Um, and then fi- final question we've got from Drew. He says, "How do you think the new signings will fit into the squad?" He put best eleven with two question marks, so I guess we've kind of already put the that. new signings. Is that Gray or Richarlison? Uh, he just said all the new signings. Like, oh right, anyone um, you think who would fit in better than others, or obviously think, Chalaba's been here before, so I think Chalaba and Gray will fit in the best. Richarlison, at first, because of his fee and the whole thing, there's a bit of, and with all Milan and Chelsea, that there'll be a lot of hype around him. Mm. Uh, but he's he's two footed. He can play striker or left wing. He's pacey, so he won't he won't I think like hit the ground running. But he should have a decent season. Should get to know Watford, get a feel of the Premier League, and then maybe next season I he'll, think a he'll massive, hit yeah, it. Like you said, I think a massive. He's going to fit in a bit better because obviously Silva is Portuguese and. Yeah, Richardson will speak Portuguese, so I think I think Giraldi mentioned mm. that in his article how that was another big plus that he can, yeah. Silver can speak to him. Um, but if you look at, I think Hughes, I think Hughes will find it hard at first because obviously he was at Derby yeah. for so long. It was he was kind of it took him a lot to it was a lot of links before that he was going to go, but now mm. he's finally gone to the Premier League, and he's kind of move down south I don't know if he'll find it hard to adapt yeah he, he might do and it's not like he's going to be starting every game so mm. when he does come in he is going to need to perform so that will he's not like Chalibur like a guaranteed starter yeah exactly so I think there will be a bit of question marks on him for a bit but at the end of the day if he, if he comes off the bench with his quick feet and creativity and causes damage and I, he could game. be a bit like Shane Long I don't think any of them will like the tag on him but he could be a super sub I, and I, then obviously yeah, yeah. in the League Cup and stuff he could Be he quite, could start yeah. so yeah exactly and uh, Gray we've already talked about so there's no point going yeah uh, Feminia I think f- f- yeah we kind of like talked about him oh yeah we've already talked about him Backman's pretty but, irrelevant uh, yeah uh, Backman yeah, is just sorry, a homegrown and younger improvement on Gil Martin on the free <laughs> yeah, so. that's fair enough and then we've got Cleverly but I mean he's that, that, people are saying that's a transfer. That's not really. I mean, it was already. Uh, yeah, it 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 does count as a summer transfer, but we'd already agreed everything. Yeah, exactly. Like he'd already signed permanently. It, it was only that he would officially become permanent on July first. Mm. So. So it was it was kind of it was ex- obviously it was expected. It, it, exactly. So yeah, the tra- the transfers the transfers are looking good, and the season ahead to round up round off this podcast. Um, it's been really good. So, uh, season prediction. I-, I might as well do mine first. I think I said. I think I said it in the last one. Uh, I said, oh, well, it's probably changed now because I said we'd finish around. I think I said 14th. I think I said. Yeah. And Silver's was probably targeting 11th to 14th. But now we've got Gray. I'm not saying we're getting Europa League. I'm not going to be one of those. <laughs> but oh God, no. I think. Um, I think. I think we'll get. I'm going to go. Maybe sneak top half. I'm going to go 11th. Oh, I said... What did I say? I said... Uh, said I said 14th. 14th. Yeah. I still think... I still do think 14th. Like, what we'll do is... We'll probably have a good run in one of the cups. Maybe get a quarterfinal. Uh, we'll have some good games. But ultimately, the defence is... Uh, at the end of the day, ultimately, we are Watford. So, we're not exactly going to get Europa League. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, but defensively, I just don't think we're organised enough. Mm. So 14th, I think it'll be a solid season. I, think... uh, I don't think not many people, there won't be many players that will flop. We've got good depth. It's just trying to build a surface, build some stability, build a connection again with the the fans and the club because Wally basically destroyed it. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. It, I think, and then maybe next season, do try and aim for the top half. Yeah, that that's the thing. I think I think the maximum or the highest position we could get this season is probably eleventh. And yeah, the the I think I can't see us getting I going just, below fourteen. Yeah, so. I really don't see us going down. I know a lot of people. Some people, a lot of neutrals will say will say that uh, we're being biased, but it it's not even. I don't think it is. It's just we've got a lot of quality. We've got a lot of Premier League players we've got Pereira we've got the players we've got Frodo like in every position yeah. we have got midfield is brilliant midfield is absolutely brilliant now we've got two Premier League quality players then we got the defence which hopefully if we build on we just I, I mean on paper or on the pitch I just think we're better than at least four to five teams so and then we should hopefully do a bit better to maybe 13th, 14th, so... Mm. No, I, I agree with you, and to be fair, it's such a big, uh, a quality podcast, I think, it's quite a long yeah. one, but we covered a lot of things, obviously yeah. talks about Grey, Liverpool, Richardson, all the questions, thanks a lot for the question, we might do that every week, that's a really good idea, yeah, a lot of it's good idea. questions, um, and then obviously the season prediction, so if you have enjoyed this podcast, and leave a like on it, uh, comment down below whether you disagree or agree with anything me and Sean have said, uh, remember to subscribe to see more Watford fan content, and we'll see you in the next podcast. Big thank you to Sean for coming on. The link to his Twitter will be in the description. And don't forget to have a look at last week's podcast just on the left.